tonight we have our free live monthly paint party. Um, so if you can see me and you'd like to join on along, that would be fantastic. I will go through the list of the supplies that we will need for today's um, painting. Um, if you are joining and you're not able to paint along with me right now, that's totally fine. What you can do is um, you can rewind the video, you can watch it later. It will be posted as well on my um, YouTube um, page, uh, Lisa's Painting Parties. Um, so I um, recommend you subscribe there so you can get any of the videos that you might have missed. There are over 100 videos available um, of these live events that are there. So if you are in a painting mood, uh, feel free to jump on there and find something you like and paint along. Um, this will also be on my Facebook page under the videos tab so you can watch it later if you so desire. This painting is great for beginners. There's a couple of cool techniques that we'll be able to do here, um, but it is definitely something that anyone can follow along with. Um, if you are someone who already has some painting experience, you can definitely take this and make it your own as well and add some other techniques and tips and tricks with it too. Um, and also, as I always encourage, um, you're more than welcome to take this and make this your own. So if you decide you don't want purple mountains, you want a different color mountain, a different color sky, whatever, you can totally go ahead and do that. Um, this is really a time for all of us to be creative together and have a good time and just relax a bit and um, that's pretty much what it's all about. So if you're um, joining me, um, please let me know where you're um, joining in from. I'm here in Ajax, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. Um, it's a bit of a cloudy day, a little rainy, but uh, nice overall. Um, looking forward to like the spring, hopefully coming at some point. Um, let me know where you're at, how everything's going with you. I will keep an eye on the comments um, as I go through um, this painting. Um, uh, it's actually, it's kind of fun, you're going to be looking at this being like, what is up with what you painted on? So I actually um, <laughs> came across some really cool trays. Um, my aunt um, had a whole bunch of them and so um, I was able to grab some and I actually painted on the tray and what I'm going to do with this tray is I'm going to add a border to clean up my messy paint lines and I'm going to actually apply um, uh, a sealant on it so that it would be like food safe and it would be okay to use in general and just protect the actual painting. Um, so I'll be doing that and I'll be actually um, doing a few more. I've done a few of them already and I'm going to be doing some more. I'm going to be doing a vendor's um, sorry, spring market on Sunday so I'll be having some of those available then and I think I'm going to get into doing a few more like this because they're quite fun to do and I think they look really nice. We'll see how the reception is. Let me know if you like that idea. If that's something that if you saw at a market, you'd be like inclined to purchase. That'd be awesome. I'd love that feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what's going on here. But um, I am going to be painting on canvas tonight, <laughs> which is the normal way I do. Um, if anyone's interested painting on wood, this wood is like an untreated wood. Um, it, there definitely is some uh, complications to that process. It's not as easy, I find, as painting on the canvas, but it is quite cool in how some of the texture still shows up in the background, so I really enjoy that component of it, um, but I am new to that process. So anyways, but that's why it's on this, but I still painted it here, and I was like, oh, I think this will be a really good one to do with the, the painting party, which is why we're doing it, and why, why our image is on this um, wooden tray, <laughs> if anyone's curious. So, um, cool. So let me go through um, what supplies you'll need for tonight's paint party um, and you can get those ready. So I use acrylic paint. Um, acrylic paint is water-based. However, if it dries on your clothing, then that will be your um, gift for tonight because it will not come out once it's dried. So if you do get it on anything that you do not want it on, you just need to get rid of it before it dries. Um, but I use acrylic paint. I use um, primarily the brand that I've been using most is um, Artist Loft, and that's um, Flow Acrylic from Artist Loft. And the paint essentially is just blue is blue, red is red, and so forth. So there's no other types of names. Um, it's like a cheaper brand of paint. I find it really accessible, and it turns out really nice as it is. So I'm sticking with these. So that's the paint I'm using. Um, I suggest you have red, yellow, blue, black, and white. If you have the primary colors and you're black and white, you can mix and do anything you like. So that's why I suggest if you have a pre-mixed purple or pink or orange, you can definitely use that too. Um, but that's what I'm going to be using there. Um, I have um, a palette where I can put my paint on. I have a couple of water containers. I have a paper towel. And I have three, these brushes were in water because I was painting earlier. Normally they're not in water. 
And I have three brushes. I have like a large, a medium, and a fine tip to use today. Although with this one, I actually didn't use the fine tip. I think maybe I did. I think maybe I used it for like the, to put the, the tree um, trunk in just to line it up, but I don't think I used it much else. So it's mostly like the two brushes I'm going to be using. I did also grab, um, since I'm going to be doing it on a, a bigger canvas, um, I did also grab my like sponge brush and also like a sponge. Um, I don't have any larger paint brushes than this one. This is a size 16. So um, just to help me with faster paint coverage, I just grabbed that. So so if you have something that's bigger, go for it, depending on the size canvas you're using, realistically. All right. So let me just... Hi, Lynn. I'm glad you're joining. Awesome. So yeah, so if you have any comments or questions as I'm going through this, please write them in. I'll keep an eye and I will um, answer. If anyone has any questions and someone else has the answer, feel free to jump in and do this. I am doing this paint session a little bit earlier than what I normally do it um, because there was another uh, conflicting event that's happening later tonight um, that I needed to attend. So um, that's why. So I apologize to anyone who might find it later, but you'll still be able to watch it anyway. So that's good. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do whenever we're working on a painting uh, acrylic painting is I always start with the background. So we're going to start by putting in the red and then we're going to get it into this orangey, this pinky almost, and then it goes into the yellow and the white. So we're going to do this background gradient. So what you want to do when you have your canvas is you want to kind of think about how far down you want that background, that sky to go. This one goes till more than halfway down. So I want to make sure that I bring the sky down further than where my mountains are going to start. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to just think of before I start painting. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So I just like to think about that. I'll keep the painting on the side there, but realistically, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this shot. So this canvas is really huge. Um, uh, uh. Okay, we're going to go like this and then... Oh, it's not so It's going to be like... Nope. Like that. Okay, I'll start like this. It's gonna be a little wonky, but that's okay. We'll move it as we need it. All right, ready to go? Hi, Mari. I'm glad you're here. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you doing? I hope you're doing good too. Okay, so I'm gonna start with getting my red, and I'll show you like how much paint I'm using. Um, however, again, I'm using like a larger canvas. If you're using a smaller canvas, then you'll you won't need as much paint. So I'm just going to pop some paint on here and then I'll show you what that looks like. You have to forgive my paint palette. I got everyone who knows me knows it's quite messy and I just keep adding. So there's the white, the red, and the yellow is on there. You can ignore that. That's actually just dried pink. <laughs> I just keep all my paint and I just pile it on. I'm going to start with the paintbrush and see how it flows and then I might switch over to the larger sponge brush. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So I'm going to start right away and put quite a bit of paint on my large brush and I'm going to start getting this paint on the canvas. Now a few things is, I'm already thinking I want to switch to the sponge. It's going to take a lot of time for me to cover this large canvas with this brush. So let's switch it up. I'm going to get a sponge instead. going to make this process a little bit faster. If you have a larger brush too, you can feel free. Although like I said, it's, <laughs> it's like 10 times faster. Like look at this, crazy. I got a nice red going. Okay, and I want the paint to remain wet because we want to blend. Let me get some yellow. Let's start to get some yellow in here. So I just put the yellow right underneath and I just bring it up into the red. And it's the same technique you would use with your paintbrush, only with a sponge. It's just like a smidgen faster. Now I want to continue going into my yellows. go. 
yellow. I'm going to use a cleaner side of the sponge so I can get more yellow happening. And then I'll pull that into that color like that. Like I said, this would be the same process if you had a paintbrush that's larger, which I don't, so I'm going to be using this for a bit just to help me out with getting this on the canvas. Nice. It's actually quite fun, I would suggest. If you have a sponge you want to play with it, it's fun. And then I'm going to go with my white, and then we'll start with my white, and I'll pull it into my yellow. All the way up. Like all my way. Whoa! Hold on to that sponge. I am going to move over to my brush, I'm pretty sure. Soon. I'm missing out some of the pinks in here. Let's get some pink happening. Okay, so now that I have a good coverage, I'm going to go back to my paintbrush and just use that because I do prefer my paintbrush. I need more yellow though. I used that up fast. Holy baloney! Okay. All right, let's back and add some more this red get some I also want like the paintbrush lines in here instead of it being so smooth with the sponge which is nice but Great. So I have that happening here. Let's go. Make it more of an orangey. I'm just holding the canvas away because I have um it's sitting on this uh my makeshift easel and the corner of it is kind of poking through and I don't like that too much. And I'm just bringing it kind of like on a bit of a swoop. Again, just make sure it goes down as far as you want the mountains to come up to. I think that's kind of where I want it to be. It's definitely way more red right now, but I think it's pretty. Add a little bit more. I just kind of made it a little swoopy. And just add a few little swooshes and streaks into my sky because I always like putting a little bit of 
almost like movement into it and I find if I put little streaks in it kind of creates that and the way I do that is with my brush when I get my paint on it I go very flat with the brush and when I do that it creates a really thin line even with a thick brush and that allows me to then have a bit more of these like dedicated like lines happening instead of it being too thick so it's quite subtle and it gives it an edge to that thing really see it but there's like just little hints of these lines instead of it just being like purely soft and like all the way down and I again it's really up to you you may want to keep it very um, soft and have like a, a more smooth gradient and that's totally fine you make it however you would like to going good so far hi Emma thanks for joining from Texas that's fantastic okay I'm just gonna soften a few of them okay I like that I think that's going nicely okay cool all right so now we're pretty much ready to start putting in the mountains. Now we're going to do the clouds after this fully dries, so we're not going to worry about the clouds just yet. Now, when you do the mountains and you want to do like a range and you have like many levels that are happening here, the range that's furthest in the back is the lightest and each range that comes closer to the front is a little darker. Now the ones at the front here, like, I mean, you can say if that one's darker or lighter than this one, like it's a little bit off, but you get the idea. Like it's going to go from light and then progressively darker. So you want to mix a purple and then you want to then put white into it. So you want to use red and blue and then you want to add white to it to get a nice light lilac. Or you may already have um, a pre-mixed lilac color and you could use that. It's really up to you. And it's okay if you got little dots on your canvas like I did because we're going to be covering them up anyways. You won't even see them afterwards, so do not worry. Now, one thing that's really nice about acrylic paint is that it can be very forgiving. Once it dries, you can pretty much paint anything on top of it. So it, uh, it can be a really nice friend <laughs> to the beginner. That can also be frustrating because it does dry very quickly. And that can be difficult um, to get a lot of the blending in. So that's why when we're doing something that requires that kind of gradient or that blend, you do need to work quickly so the paint doesn't dry. Um, and that is definitely also the tricky part. It's that, that's what's great about it and what's annoying about it is that it dries fast. <laughs> All right. So really your mountains can be in any particular way. You can decide how you want them to be. It doesn't have to, you don't have to follow any particular order. Um, the first thing, actually, no, I do need to mix my paint. So what I'm going to do, um, yeah, we'll just use this brush. Okay, so I'm just going to have my red and my blue, and I'm just going to pull them. I usually leave a little gap in the middle, but I did not do that this time. So that's okay. I'm just going to pull a little bit of each color into my middle. And I have a really dark purple, which we don't want it to be that dark. 
then I'm going to grab some white and bring some of that in until I get a light shade. I want it even lighter than that, I think. Okay, I don't know if you can see that too well. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Okay, and whenever you have the shade that you're happy with, I feel like I'm still going lighter, which is okay. I actually did have to do that. That's all right. Okay, cool. And it's okay that I have a lot of paint on my brush because we'll use it right now. Okay, so let's decide where we want our range to start. So I think I'm going to have mine. I'm going to start higher up here. Maybe I'll have it come, maybe have it even a bit higher than that actually. Okay. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. I am putting a bit more white into it as I go because as I'm noticing it is drying a little bit darker than what I want it to be. And I am going to continue it on. I'm just playing with this side right now. I just have them like in little like rolling hills upwards along the mountain edge there. Funny how the gray, the purple can have almost like a gray tint to it. So I need a bit more white in here because I do want these to be a little bit lighter than they are. Since it's still pretty, it's still wet, which is good. We can do that and we can lighten them up a little bit. this up here a bit. Okay, and they can be the same size, they can be higher on one side than the other. Again, it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you. Oh, thank you, Mary. Okay, so now I want to make it a little bit darker and then we're going to do the next layer. Okay, and now the next layer, 
and I'm going to have it come up here. It is better to wait until it dries, just as a heads up. But again, anyone who's painted with me knows that I am impatient and I like to continue on. <laughs> However, if you're doing this at home, you can feel free to use like a hair dryer and that will help this process along. This next layer can also go above the layer that you've already created. So you don't have to keep it, um, like you can make one to go higher if you want to, that's totally fine as well. Okay. I'm just gonna take a little bit of more of that. That dried pretty quickly on me. Okay. I'm doing this just to get like, there's a lot of paint in the belly of my brush, so I'm just trying to get it out. Okay, so that's that layer. Now we have the second layer there. Okay, then I'm going to go even darker. And I think with this one, we're going to start this one a little higher here. This is going to come. down. And I think maybe it's going to peak up here. dark. Okay. And then maybe this one will come up. Okay. Okay, so now we have that going on. And then we'll do another layer. Hi, Melinda. Yes, absolutely. You can watch it on my um, YouTube channel under the videos tab on my Facebook page as well. The two options for you. Okay, and then I'm going to mix my blue and my red again to get more purple. But I'm going to add more red into it, so it's more of a reddish purple, so it will look different on top of this guy here. Okay, and then maybe here we're going to add
me to add to comments a little bit more. I'm not sure. Let's see. It almost does blend in a little bit much here, right? Okay, let's add more to it. Oops. And I might do one more layer. Maybe I'll make it more blue and then I'll end it off that way, I think. Okay. I'm just going to do a purple again, but I'm going to add more blue than red to get like a different shade. And then I'll do one more row, which is one more than I did on the one I, the initial one, but I think that will look good. So I think I want this to be here and that to be a little higher and I want it to come up and then I'm going to just paint the rest of this. Oh, okay, there it is. And I can come down like this, which is kind of comes up to that one spot. Nice. Should use the sponge again, I guess, actually. That makes it a lot easier to fill this in. Mm -hmm. Or I could do it the, <laughs> the more time consuming way. And again, if you wait each layer until it's dry, this process will be a lot more forgiving. If you're doing it when it's wet, you'll run into the problem sometimes of the paint lifting up when you apply another coat on top, which is a little annoying. So you kind of have to go kind of with a light touch to try not to do that. To me, I'm pretty used to it like that. So I, it's, it's okay. It doesn't, I'm not really annoyed by that. If that's something that bothers you, then you just want to wait until each layer is dry. to go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas. Now we have beautiful layers. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Yeah, I think the sky really popped really nice with all of the this darkness too that's happening at the bottom. The contrast makes everything look really cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean off that big old brush. Right now it's 532, not too bad. So it's been about half an hour. That's really good. I got a really good amount done just now. Okay. So now I'm going to let the bottom part dry before we start putting our trees in. I'm going to go back up to do the clouds in the sky. I'm going to use my small brush. This one's a size zero brush. It's very small. It's flat. 
um, when it's super flat like that it has a very thin very thin as well um, I really like this brush for a lot of detail now the clouds let's take a look at our image here so if we look at the clouds they have a lot of texture to them and the way we do that is really by using the brush um, to our advantage almost as if it's like a stamp we're going to be using it that way and then we're going to be very light and doing these little wispies to it and you can add as many or as few clouds as you want it really is up to you and so the way I'm going to apply paint to my brush is again I'm going to use the brush I'm going to pull the paint onto the brush so I have like a good amount of paint on there and I can start you can start wherever your heart wants to to start I'm going to go here and I'm just going to go and just kind of put a blop. I'm going to go beside the blop. I flip the brush over because there's more paint on that side to there. And then I'm going to keep doing little blops and sometimes going up. Sometimes. Maybe I want this one to be a bit higher. And when I have the top, so basically like the top of the cloud um, has shape to it, has like curves. And the bottom of the cloud is straight. I feel like my cloud is crooked in the sky because I'm weirdly off when I'm painting on. Okay. Let's just add some more. You can add a few little lines on this side to kind of show off little cloud trails. Okay, you can add another one. Maybe I'll put one here this time. here a little one a baby one and again maybe we'll put one more right here Another one up here, I think. Okay, so we have a couple of clouds floating around in the sky. Maybe we'll put one over here. Do we want to do? Maybe put one here. Oh, I'm gonna go off the canvas. Okay, I think I kind of want to do another one right here. Put one here. And 
that one block the canvas as well. I'm just going to add a few little lines. I know what I will be doing here. I wonder if there's a mock block to this one. Okay, so yeah, you can add as many or as few as you like. I think I'm feeling pretty good with the clouds. Maybe, maybe one more. I don't want another one like here. one just chilling it out all right um i think i'm gonna just make this one a little bit lighter because it's a little hard to see some of the All right, so we got our clouds, really cute. And so I think I'm feeling pretty good with them. I don't have many on this side, but I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I kind of like the way that looks. Okay, right. so if you wanna add more, of course you can. Um, you can make them bigger if you want, smaller, whatever you want. And then from here, we're gonna do our trees. So now this is shiny, but it's dry enough for us to do the next steps so we're going to get our black paint and for our trees pick wherever you'd like them like in the the our example image here i do have them kind of they're kind of leaning in a bit and then some of the ones in the middle kind of turn back so i want the ones on the outside to be the tallest and they're going to kind of tilt in and as they go closer to the middle they're going to get smaller and then they might be a bit more wonkier they might not follow the same format i didn't want them all to go in the same direction i thought that kind of added some interest to it and again you can put as many or as few as you desire i'm going to start with trees i'm going to get my thin brush and get black paint and all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want this tree to be here and just put a line like all the way down. Okay. And I'm going to just thicken it up a little bit because at the bottom, as the tree, as we get to the bottom of the tree, it is thicker. So I do want this to be a little thicker. And I don't want it to be super straight. I do want it to have a bit of a wonk to it. Okay. Or like so. Okay. And then I'm going to do the one on the other side. So this one I want it to be here. And it's going to come down like that. And similarly... We want the base to be thicker. Okay, so I have two. Okay, and then I'm gonna have another one here also kind of tilted inwards and again I want the base to be a little thicker okay, 
going to do the same thing on this side. Oh, that's a lot of paint on that brush. I've got to scrap. And then we're going to go here. And again, we're just going to make that a little bit thicker at the bottom. Give the tree something to stand on. Okay. And then I'm going to make this one a little wonky and it's going to go the other way. Okay, and the base is going to be just a little thicker, a little bit. And the same thing here, we're going to make it a bit smaller, like that. Okay, so that's all the trees we got going on. Looking pretty cute. All right, so how do we do all the lovely branches that are going to happen here? So a few things to talk about before we start the branches. So let's take a look first at our example image here. You can make branches whichever way you want, but if you want to make them kind of look like this, like our Canadian wilderness trees are very wonky at times. And that's kind of the vibe I wanted to emulate on this. And so a few things is that there's definitely spaces where you can see the background still. So I haven't just covered it in black. There's spaces in the background. So we want to keep that in mind. Branches go in all sorts of wonky ways. Some go really low, some go upwards, they get kind of funky. However, you will notice that they are smaller at the top and then they will get bigger. Some of them get fun, kind of funky in the middle, but at the top, it's all smaller, okay? So keep that in mind. So go smaller and then you want to get wider as you get lower. And even the really low, a lot of these trees tend to have a lot of like, I don't even say a lot, but have their branches and stuff at the top and have a big chunk of um, trunk that's just left without anything on it. So that can happen as well. And even with these ones, they're still pretty uniform. Sometimes there's like big gaps in them too. So you can play with it and have fun with it. You don't have to put as many branches as you want. Uh, oh, sorry, you know, as, as you think you need, you can put less, you can put more, whatever you so desire. Um, you can take a look and see some pictures if you want to get some ideas. I'm going to go through and start and just kind of play with it and see what these trees end up looking like. But it's really, again, up to you. So to do those, I'm going to go back to the zero brush. I'm going to use that brush. Okay, and again, I want it to be very flat. And then when I grab the paint on my brush, I pull the paint, put the brush in, and I just like pull the paint down. And what that does, there's a lot of paint still on my brush, but my brush still stays very flat, okay? So when I start, I wanna start small, and I'm just going to dab Like that that's my little top part there and I'm just dabbing and pulling my brush and trying to use the brush itself as a stamp for it okay maybe I'll start this one here And you might go sparse at first, and then maybe you'll go back and add more to it if you want to. You also may want to change and use a bigger brush if you want to. I might keep that tree like that for now and then maybe we'll go back to it and add some more to it. I can't, I do want to make them a little bit more sparser than I initially did them on the first painting. Okay, I'm going to move over to this one and do this one next. I 
kind of dabbing. I'm being like a little erratic with it. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that one like that. Okay, and then again, we're going to do back here. I think now I want to do one more. Okay. And then we'll go on this side and we'll do this tree. And sometimes like the branches go like right in front of where the trunk is. That may happen too, right? That's good. Okay. And then we'll do this one. I think that's good. And we'll do another one here.
Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. We've got our trees. They're looking a little wonky, really cute. And that's pretty much it. So that's like a really quick and easy painting. Ooh, the sun's coming in real nice right now to do. Again, that took, I guess, just less than an hour to complete, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so we got some nice blending going on. Um, we have some nice layering. Again, like when we do any type of layering, you want to get some nice depth going in. Having a lighter color and then working way towards a darker color at the front works really well for that. Um, for mountains, it's a quick and easy way to have mountains or like rolling hills or anything like that, even like buildings. Um, if you have that technique for anything like that and just kind of keep building on top, you'll get a nice layer of depth, um, layers of depth <laughs> in those types of works, which is really great. Um, and then adding a nice silhouette on the front really makes everything pop. Also, our clouds, like again, very easy, straightforward to do and just have fun with. Just keep in mind, like very, this is just one type of cloud, of course. Um, and to do these ones, you want to have them textured at the top. Um, using like the brush almost like as dabbing and having nice texture and then have like little like wispy lines at the bottom and that creates a nice look that way. All right, well, there we go. So I hope everyone enjoyed um, the painting session. If you painted along with me, please take a picture of your painting and add it to the post on uh, Lisa's Painting Party's page. I thought that was a lot of peas I just said. <laughs> My mouth was like a lot. Um, yeah, so please do that. Um, share with anyone. Uh, who you think would enjoy this and who would want to be creative with us. Um, I do a free painting party every month on the first Wednesday of every month. Normally it is at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week was a little bit earlier um, and it'll be right here on Facebook Live. Um, also, all of again, if you enjoyed and you want to check out my other videos, you can go to my YouTube page and all of the paintings that we've done live here are on there easy to view so please uh, check that out and subscribe um, check me out on Instagram as well I have updates to any types of like events that we're having whether they're in person or virtual so check that out um, and the website is up as well so Lisa's uh, www.lisaspaintingparties.com and you can check that out if you want to host a party or anything like that all right have a fantastic rest of your night a great May and uh, see you all soon bye everyone thanks for joining <laughs>